What's up, Wave Makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Let's dance. And Itty. You good, kitty. My baby's sleeping. Wish me luck. If you're seeing this video, it means I work my patootie off. I uh, am on the other side of the country visiting family. And I thought about like, uh, I'll just skip another Monday upload, but I've been doing that too much lately. I figure if I just work my ass off two days before I go on vacation, then that's when I can truly begin to enjoy my time off and actually make it time off and not worry about work, right? Yeah, so hopefully I get this shit done before I have to jump on a plane and fly across the country. Don't worry, I'm not gonna half-ass anything. I'm just gonna do what we normally do and just really super duper hope I get this done. <laughs> it's time to look at some MLM memes. Before we do, please make sure that you like and comment on this video because the algorithm loves that and it's been not so kind to me lately because I've been skipping the Monday uploads. <laughs> so even if you have nothing to say, just say it. Just say it. Just say it out loud. And then of course subscribe to this channel if you're not already or if you thought you were subscribed and YouTube unsubscribed you like they do for fucking everybody for some reason. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button again please. Thank you! So the top meme this week is from It Works. It's titled, Hoping to be able to take a week off after birth. Such time freedom. For the next four days my team and I are doing a huge push so that I can hopefully take a week off for baby. Hi there, it's me from the future. I totally missed out on a sick joke. What I should have said was her and her team are gonna do a huge push so that she can also do a huge push. Pop that sucker out! <laughs> I suck. <laughs> Listen, I can relate to this, obviously, being a content creator and having just had a baby five months ago. You know, YouTube doesn't pay my leave. For me, like, my job is fun. I like to do it. I like to sit here and do makeup and talk shit about MLMs and then I like to edit things. So I made my first video after having Griffin. I think he was five days old. <laughs> I was five days postpartum, like not even a week. But it was because I wanted to. Like I had been cooped up in the hospital for two and a half, three days, and I hadn't had a moment to myself. So that's what I did to take back my life for a second. I didn't have to do that, whatever. Like, hey, I mean, obviously time freedom aside, we'll get to that in a second, but financial freedom? Like if you have financial freedom, you shouldn't have to make yourself work even if you don't want to after you have a baby. And even then a week off, like, like, okay, America sucks <laughs> in this way because obviously, I think we all know that people in the United States are not guaranteed any paid leave at all. In fact, I'd say a good majority of jobs out here don't pay their employees anything except for like having to use your own vacation time to get paid while you're on family medical leave. So it sucks in general that we even have to consider any of this. If you don't want to work after you have your baby, you shouldn't have to work, but that's just a flaw in our system. But they like to preach about how financially free they are. And really, like, if she were up on top of the pyramid, like, they always like to preach about residual income, too. I'm sorry, sis. If you have residual income, why do you need to only take a week off? And you can only take that week off if you guys get a big sales push? Like, something smells fishy. It's almost like they're not making as much money as they say they are. What a concept. Funny how that works. But yeah, even if you're at the top of the pyramid, you still have to consider what you're gonna do when you give birth. So that's an MLM problem that the Huns don't like to talk about, and that's also an America problem. <laughs> MLM memes. I'm proud of you, stranger. When you see someone finally left their multi-level marketing company, <laughs> I'm proud of you, complete stranger. <laughs> I like that. I don't know what this is in reference to, like what the original picture is in reference to, but I like it. That's some good vibes right there. Another MLM memes posted on a friend's timeline today. No one ever prepared me for the number of pyramid schemes I'd have to avoid. Maybe you should try it. There's tons of money to be made at home directly from your phone. I thought the same thing but all I really do is post to social media our products honestly sell themselves. We are a health and wellness company that is all about helping people get out of debit. We have over 40 plus botanically based products like keto products, skin care, stuff to help with energy, weight loss products, and our most popular product is called the skinny wrap. The best part of this business is you can make extra money from your phone. You can work anywhere in the world. What amount of income would help you breathe? Oh dear sweet Karen, bless your heart, but I would rather scoop my eyes out with an ice cream scooper than get involved. That is a self-report. <laughs> she straight up said, no one prepared me for the amount of pyramid schemes I'd have to avoid. She didn't even say MLMs and this girl's all like, did you say pyramid scheme? Let me tell you about the one I'm involved in. 
No sis, that's a self report right there. It's probably it works, right? Someone tell it works headquarters. Someone tell the FTC. Hey FTC, I know you've been trying to take down pyramid schemes for a long time, but these people are just straight up admitting it now. So can we like get something done? There's just so much cognitive dissonance there. The Huns just don't see it, dude. They literally are so brainwashed that they're like, everything they ever read, everything they ever post about is about their MLM all the time, no matter what. They let it take over their freaking lives and that's sad, but also you're in a cult. Beachbody, people wonder why, this is why. Powder predators, ooh, that's a good one. Okay, y'all, I'm fucking fuming over here. My grandma called, apparently my sister signed her up for Beachbody five months ago on the auto pay thing for shakes. She's on a fixed income and cannot afford $99 a month on that shit. She asked my sister to end her account because it overdrew her last month. She promised she would. June rolls around and she's overdrawn again because if my sister ends her account, then she drops a level and won't be able to afford her own shakes or some shit. Really? Her Beachbody mentor advised her not to cancel my grandma's account. I'm so pissed right now. How do people really not see how horribly predatory these things are? What's BB? Beachbody. Dude. Dude. Imagine selling out your grandma like that. Your grandma. Sweet old grandma. <laughs> like, hey Karen, what makes you think that your finances are more important than your grandmother? She's probably on social security, which we should all know by now, really doesn't cover a lot of people to live comfortably in their retirement. They usually struggle from month to month, you know? But, oh, but grandma, I won't be able to afford my shakes if you leave. Not my fucking problem, Karen. Maybe you shouldn't have gotten into a pyramid scheme. Like, what do you want me to say? I swear, if any of my future grandchildren even try that shit. Well, let's just hope that MLMs aren't even around when I have grandchildren someday. That's just sick though. Like, you don't scam people. Just don't do that. But you also especially, hey, especially especially don't scam your grandma. Like honestly, don't scam your grandma is a sentence I never thought I would say. I guess I just never thought that I would have to tell someone <gasps> not to scam their grandma. I mean, don't scam anyone else's grandma either. Just don't scam people, but especially like, where is your heart and soul if you're totally okay with doing that to an old lady? Not that every grandma is an old lady. Listen, the kid, if they're in beach body, has to be at least 18 years old. So if you're a grandmother, I'm not calling you old, okay? Chill. Mom. Does it drive anyone else crazy when they say zero chemicals? Our product does not contain any matter. Then what the heck am I paying for? A bottle? Which obviously there's chemicals in that bottle too. Anyway. American made. Sealed. Plant based. Zero toxins. Zero chemicals. Customized products. Ship to your door. Help stop the shortage. Shop small. Shop online. Don't panic. Order organic. Help stop the shortage. What shortage are they talking about? Seriously, like, can someone explain this to me? I mean, I guess I could go read the comments, but we're talking about shampoo and conditioner. They're claiming there's no chemicals in it when obviously everything's a chemical. Fucking water is a chemical. Look at a periodic table for once in your life, Karen. God, I hate that. <laughs> does it bother anyone else? Um, yeah. Yeah, it does. Ooh, look at that, and it's sealed. Do you see that seal? That sweet seal? I swear they get off on the seal thing. <laughs> Top comment says ship to your door. Yeah, so is everything I buy online. Grasping at straws, eh? Right? Okay, good point. That's one I just like totally skipped over. They're talking about the sealed thing. Everyone's like, why is that a selling point? And I guess it's because a lot of drugstore brands, if you get it off the shelf, like a lot of them aren't sealed. But here's what my theory is about, I mean, first of all, there are plenty of products, shampoo and conditioners, hair products, whatever, that come sealed. Not every product is not sealed. So that's why it's stupid that this is even a selling point. But I think what it is, is that, okay, so the nature of MLMs is a lot of them, and I'm not saying they make you keep an inventory, but let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of time, a distributor might end up inventory loading because of bonus buying, essentially. And that's just kind of the culture there. It's just like, buy everything, buy all the things all the time. So, and especially, so then there's like people who have money based salons, which <sighs> Those people are going to keep an inventory at their salon. So Monet wants to be able to make sure that, you know, the stylist isn't fucking with the formula and stuff. I don't know for whatever reason, because let's be honest, they most certainly would if that shit wasn't sealed. And then that would be on Monet. So my theory is, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons why they seal their products, but my theory is the biggest reason is because they don't trust their distributors enough not to do something that's gonna legally fuck them over. <laughs> that's just what I think. Let me know what you think down below, but I think I'm right. <laughs> 
<laughs> this person said it'd be weirder if I couldn't have it shipped to my door. <laughs> right. Okay, so I found a top comment that says, stop the shortage. What the hell is she talking about? And they said, if you order more stuff, the shortage stops. Come on guys, this is basic math. The more you look at it, the stupider it gets. And then the OP said, who knows? Okay, so no one knows. What shortage? What is the shortage? I want to know. Is there anyone in Monate who is hate watching this video <laughs> who can tell us what the shortage is? Is there like supposedly a shampoo shortage or like a hygiene product shortage or I don't know. What is it? What's going on here? Please help. Young Living. They spend the money because pharmaceuticals actually work, hun. When someone says oils are too expensive slash don't work and then spends five dollar signs on pharmaceuticals. Right. You know, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny how there's like just so many tests that a medicine or a pharmaceutical has to go through before it can be distributed to the public <laughs> in a pharmacy. And then meanwhile, where are all those tests for essential oils? Oh, I'm sorry, there aren't any? I mean, there are a few, but they're very few and far between. And most of the studies that are done on essential oils to prove whether or not they work, blah, 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 most of the time they prove the opposite of what these people are trying to say, that it cures cancer and that it blah, 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 blah. I mean, not every medicine works for everyone's body. I think we all know that by now. Everyone's different, but in general, I don't think I even have to explain this. Like your essential oils are not proven to work. Essential oils really run on a placebo effect. They do. I'm pretty sure they were even talking about that in that uh, unwell Netflix series. But you know, in the end, it really only does more harm than good. And I know it's a pretty big argument, especially right now during the end times of COVID with the whole Steven Crowder H3 thing that Steven Crowder was bitching and moaning about what Ethan said to, hey, you have a whole government agency to tell you what to do when it comes to diseases and being sick and shit, so just listen to them. Steven Crowder got all pissed, just like, uh, no, you need to do your own research. Just like, fine, do your own research, but like, can you use a brain cell when you do it? I mean, people who believe this stuff, you can't really like have a real conversation with them because you could be like, well, here's this source and that source and that source that says that what you're saying isn't true. And then they'll just say, uh, that publication got paid out by Big Pharma to say that. And it's like, no, they, they didn't. It's just scientific fact, Karen. Like, yeah, you can't reason with these people. And then they'll give you a shitload of sources from weird, like, natural, holistic blogs. And it's like, who is this person? And why is what they say more factual and easier for you to believe than someone who went to fucking college to study biology and study epidemiology? And like, why is it so much easier to believe those people? I'm like, I just don't get it. Because the evidence just isn't there. And yeah, um, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to trust people who went to college much longer than I did for something I am not educated in at all. Yeah, I'm gonna trust those people. It's just so freaking wild, man. And you will never see the day where I stop taking my antidepressants and trade it out for your fucking lavender. I won't do it. Unless the science says I should, which it never will, then I ain't doing it. I feel like I say this a lot, but like essential oils are fine for aromatherapy as long as you don't have pets, first of all because <laughs> most essential oils are dangerous to pets too. Oh, my baby's awake. Ah. I'm coming, Bubby. You guys haven't seen Griffin in a while. He's getting big. Can you sit behind me and play? You go right here. He'll probably get a little noisy, sorry. But anyway, if you don't have anyone in your household who has negative reactions to essential oils just being there and you like the smell of them, then fine. But like, if you're using them because you think that they are overhauling your freaking health, that just ain't it, sis. Go to a doctor. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. This is not a matter of Big Pharma trying to control anything. It's a matter of Big Pharma, Big Pharma, having a lot more factual evidence on their side and a lot more anecdotal evidence on their side. Let's be honest. LuLaRoe. I sometimes wonder what the workplace for an actual LuLaRoe employee is like. Whoa, a software developer for LuLaRoe? You know, LuLaRoe has been through a lot of like legal shit lately. Wouldn't you like find a new job by now? Because I mean, let's be honest, they're probably going to be out of a job soon enough. We can thank Roberta Blevins for that. She's great. Also, that salary wage gap is pretty big. But I can imagine like a software developer for LuLaRoe, their job is probably 
similar to any other software developer in any other office job. Now, I mean, like the customer service team probably has a lot of really fun stories about crazy Karens, but a software developer, meh. I mean, for LuLaRoe, they've probably seen a lot of weird shit, like because of the owners being as flamboyant and obnoxious as they are. But the work is all probably similar to what you'd be doing elsewhere. Well, I was gonna do like eyeliner and stuff, but uh, now that my baby's awake, I think it's time to thank my patrons and my members. Patreon and YouTube memberships are a really good way to support your girl. By the way, I have this setting spray that I got from FabFitFun. It's a uh, Watermelon Burst by Ciate London. It smells so good. It smells like a watermelon Jolly Rancher, so if you're into that, but I, ugh, I love it. It smells so good. Anyway, in my Patreon membership, you can find our Discord server that is exclusive to patrons and members. We have a postcard club, which I'm going out of town, so I'm gonna try to get some postcards from elsewhere this time. I usually just buy cute ones on Amazon. I'm gonna try to get some from Washington while I'm out there. That should be fun. Sorry about my hair. It needs to be washed. <laughs> I also often give you guys early access to videos whenever I'm able to. So if all of that and more sounds good to you, then you can go to patreon.com slash savannahmarie or you can click the join button beneath this video. So the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Alice W, Jerry Duncan, Samantha Jackson, Evan Adler, Laura Lynn Martin, Eve Blondo, Daniel Urena, April Lindblom, Tuesday the 13th, Amanda McMahon, E. Higgins, Erica Lautercratic, Molly Wasilewski, Boris Geller, Meredith Nakata, Rachel McHenry, Kim Cartwright, Maddie Darley, Kelly Creffield, Katrina Rosemarick, Elizabeth Wyatt, Tiffany Bruss, Jay Marie, Auntie Lou, Vamp Fay, Fallon Lowry, Sabrina Franklin, and Julia Nieberdowski. And to the rest of my fabulous patrons and members, thank you so much for being here and for being you. Thank you for making it to the end of this video, even if you're not a patron or a member. I mean, I appreciate it no matter what. I appreciate you being here. With that being said, keep making waves, babes. I will smell you all later. Hopefully, I'll have a video out this Thursday, but I can't guarantee anything because vacation. So, <laughs> anyway, Mommy Tsunami out.